This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to show you a very cool new project. As you can see we have a few parts on the desk, mainly a linear actuator with a stepper motor uh, based on an SFU1605 uh, ball screw. And then uh, here we have the electronics, uh, stepper motor driver, microcontroller, display and a few other things just to make the circuit work. And then of course all these components will be mounted on these or on one of these uh, nice uh, PCBs as you can see. So it will be a relatively uh, large board with all the components but when, it, it, when it's finished it will look uh, quite nice. And uh, as you can see there is one extra item on top of this actuator which is a ball head. And as you could uh, have guessed, this ball head will hold a camera. So the purpose of uh, this uh, device or this wall uh, project is a very fun uh, thing. I previously made a somewhat similar thing, which is a camera rail, uh, which you could use to, for example, make time-lapse videos or things like that while moving your camera slowly across a rail. So in that sense, uh, they are somewhat similar, but I wrote a totally new software. Uh, I designed a PCB for it. And then uh, also this part here is more precise because it requires that precision and it has a bit different purpose. So then what's the purpose of this? As you can see it in the title of the video, this will be used for macro photography. So this will be used for moving either the camera as it is in the current state because the ball head is here or this thing will move the subject that you want to take pictures of. And why we need focus stacking is uh, because when you use a macro lens and you want to take a picture of a bug or something small object then you will notice that the depth of field so basically the sharp area across your image uh, if I simplify the, the definition a bit too much maybe, then uh, that sharp uh, area is very narrow. So you have a very narrow or shallow uh, depth of field. And that is of course uh, annoying because you want to have the wall subject in your picture to be sharp. And then uh, how, how can you do that while maintaining uh, both like sharpness and having the same uh, large um, magnified image of a uh, for example, a head of a fly or some other typical examples. So then comes uh, this guy into the picture. So what we do is uh, we move to the subject with the camera and then we uh, select a starting point where we start taking pictures. And then uh, by moving uh, a little bit less than the depth of the field, so the width of the sharp area forward until we reach the end of our image, where we want to have the end of the sharp uh, detail of the picture, then we stop there. And uh, by this stepping uh, strategy, we collect pictures. So in between each steps, we take a picture. And then at the end, we will have a bunch of pictures, maybe a few dozens of pictures or maybe hundreds of pictures, depending on the subject and so on and the settings of the camera. And uh, then these pictures are then imported in a software which can uh, deal with these images and then these are blended or mixed uh, together to make one single uh, image which is sharp all across the frame. So this uh, thing will do the same and uh, I developed everything from uh, scratch uh, regarding the software and the circuit so those are like uh, my things and uh, this thing is just uh, something that you can buy off uh, on Amazon, AliExpress, eBay, you name it. So it's a ready made uh, linear actuator. So actually if you follow my project uh, it will be very simple to uh, yeah, recreate this uh, thing. And uh, that's what we are going to do here. I will guide you through these things. So I will show you how this thing works and how we can make it so you can also replicate this project for your own macro photography uh, rig. And of course at the end I will take a few pictures and I will show you uh, on different camera how this thing uh, looks like 
uh, that I'm talking about depth of field and uh, stacking of the images and so on and so on. So then uh, let's start uh, with the PCB, which is provided by the sponsor of this video, PCBVay. If you want to get these uh, similar uh, PCBs, uh, go to the project page on pcbway.com because there you can find uh, this project and also other uh, projects uh, from me. So you can buy uh, my stuff and support me at the same time by buying uh, my PCBs. And also, if you go to the main website uh, of uh, pcbway.com and uh, look around in their services, you can make your own PCB with them. Or if you have 3D printing uh, projects or machining projects, then they can also help you to create those uh, objects or create those circuits. So what we are going to do here now is that I will take one of these PCBs and I will slowly assemble this uh, circuit and show you it from a closer perspective. And I will talk about uh, the different details of this uh, uh, project. So as you can see on the top left corner, I have already uh, prepared all the parts. So I just have to place them to the corresponding places and then uh, show you uh, what is what. But first I will switch to another camera because you can see that the PCB sometimes becomes shiny because of the light up here. And I will show you the different parts of the PCB so you can see uh, what happens here. So let's look at the circuit board in a bit more detail. And let's start from the power source. So right here at the top left corner uh, we have a DC barrel jack connector and uh, we will provide 12 volts here and then that 12 volts uh, goes to the uh, stepper motor driver which will be placed here uh, through a capacitor and then that 12 volt also goes to a low dropout 5 volt uh, voltage regulator which will provide the 5 volt for the rest of the circuit so for the Arduino Nano uh, for our display which will be in this uh, frame right here and uh, for these uh, switches and uh, rotor encoder and then also it will help us to select the micro stepping right here and then help us to power the limit switch. And then uh, here we have a stepper motor uh, output. You can see we are using a bit uh, thicker lines here because there will be a somewhat larger current flowing through these uh, traces. So then here we will have a screw terminal. Here uh, the limit switch will have, I will either directly solder it here, uh, the wires of it, or have a jumper header as well as here for the uh, micro-stepping uh, pins. I will use probably just a jumper header. And then uh, also the Arduino Nano will have a header so I can unplug it whenever it is uh, necessary. And then uh, also here, uh, first for the uh, 1.0 board, I will just use a uh, header here, so I will not directly solder the display in case I mess up something. And then, uh, of course, as usual, uh, which is missed often by other uh, people, I have rounded edges or rounded corners. I think that's very important because otherwise these can be quite sharp. And then I also have this uh, M3 uh, pad, so I can uh, put screws through this thing or bolts and nuts and it will hold the board very nicely. And then the back side is nothing uh, extraordinary. So I just have the pin connections, but of course I needed the other side as well, because you can see that quite many pins uh, go to the display here and uh, they need it to be uh, taken at the back side of the board. Otherwise I could not uh, do it here because I have already kind of occupy the place here. So it's good to have a double-sided board. And as you can see, probably, uh, I tried these rounded traces as well, and also the teardrops around uh, the pads. Uh, it's not, maybe not the best, uh, I mean, my efforts, but it looks uh, quite nice, I think. So it's not so bad. So before assembling the board, I just show you my setup. So it's an old uh, Sony A6000 with a 7 Artisans 60 millimeter uh, macro lens. And this will be my setup. So this thing will, yeah. 
sit right here and then I will uh, move it with the, with the carriage. Let's look at it from uh, sideways. So something like this. I will show you uh, from another perspective later when everything is assembled. So there is one more thing that I haven't mentioned. It's very nice that I can move this uh, carriage, this guy here, and I can program it and whatever, but uh, how do I take pictures? So then uh, I used a somewhat uh, cheating way. So we know that uh, here we have a port or two ports, but one port which can be used for this guy here. So this is uh, like a very cheap uh, stuff uh, with the corresponding suitable connector which goes in here if I can find it and then uh, by pressing the button I can uh, release the shutter and then I can take pictures uh, but how does this thing work so I bought two of this uh, thing and I disassembled one of it and this is from the shutter button uh, side so there is a small metal uh, plate there but I think this is more interesting uh, I hope it's visible, but you can see that there are just uh, three metal plates and actually here you might see the solder joints there, three. Uh, there was just a piece of cable which I uh, removed, uh, it's right here, because I used it for the uh, test circuit. So there are three wires here and how this uh, shutter works is that when you short all these things uh, together, so when I press, press it down uh, enough, and all the three uh, plates are shorted, that means that all the three wires are shorted together, then that uh, triggers uh, the shutter in the camera. So then uh, I just uh, copied that kind of thing uh, on my circuit and I just uh, short together these uh, three connections in a certain way and uh, with that I can trigger the camera to take a picture. So then that, that works quite well. But uh, in a future iteration, uh, I can use an infrared LED because this camera and most of the cameras uh, have infrared uh, LED, uh, infrared light receivers. So then uh, I can uh, just use that. And uh, it's just enough uh, to run it directly from the, from the output pin of the microcontroller. So probably I can uh, do it without changing anything on the board. But uh, this will be our uh, set up and actually this is the camera that I use whenever you see a close-up uh, shot or close-up videos and I also use this uh, guy to take pictures of everything so yeah it's an old but uh, very uh, reasonable uh, system so let's start assembling uh, these things here and then uh, after I assembled everything we test the circuit and I show you how it works So the circuit is done, 
uh, everything went well with the soldering. So now I just have to put in the rest of the parts and see if it works. So let me do that quickly. So we have the display and as I said I will put a header for it so I can just uh, snap it on. And as you can see I put some plastic uh, uh, spacers here uh, to make the screen lay a bit more flat and uh, also unload this joint a little bit. But I could have uh, used a bit uh, higher spacer but this is what I have right now. But yeah for the future I will use a larger one here or just directly solder it to the board. And then we have the Arduino Nano and here on the board uh, probably you can see it uh, there is a text that says USB so the USB port should face that way and then now that is done and then uh, this will be for the stepper motor because you can see that we have this terminal so I just uh, plug it in and then we have the driver here uh, I just put this heatsink on it so at the bottom you see that shiny black thing that's an adhesive layer a piece of glue double-sided tape so I just put this on the surface of the chip now it's cooler than ever and then on the bottom we can see which side is which so this side here is the motor side and here we see the trace is there that that goes this way so this is done uh, we have our limit switch, I will show you how it functions, but it has its own cable of course and that uh, is actually good for us because you will see why. So I designed uh, the limit switch connectors for the same polarity as this has, so red as plus, black as minus and green as the signal and here I also indicated it that uh, plus minus and S as signal. So. This just goes in, so this is done, and then uh, the limit switch can be freely placed uh, by the user wherever they want it to have it. Then we have these three jumper pins here, or three pairs, uh, for the micro stepping. And I know that uh, for 800 steps per turn, because that's what I'm using, we have uh, low, high, low, which means that I only have to connect uh, the middle one. So that will be high and then the rest I just put it on the side so it will not be connected to any uh, stuff but it will be on the circuit board whenever I need it. Just like that. So they are not connected you can see that the two pins are not connected. So this is just hanging freely. So we have the buttons, the rotor encoder that also has a button and then everything is done. So I will connect uh, the motor here. I have the nice cables prepared and then I will connect the power supply. First uh, I will use my lab power supply and then we will see if this thing works. So now the wall circuit is assembled as you can see. I have the laboratory power supply uh, 12 volts attached to the corresponding uh, DC input. I have the screw terminals there. I have the limit switch here. I have the step promoter driver and everything else attached uh, to the circuit even the uh, shutter release cable so everything is assembled and what I'm going to do now is that I will switch to another camera uh, because I want to show you what is happening on the screen first and then uh, I will return to you with some other uh, pictures and other uh, scenes. So right now we are looking at the empty display here and you can see the knob of the rotor encoder out of focus and then you see the green or right button or and the red or left button. So now I just turn on the power supply and we will see what happens. So there is a vacuum screen and then uh, the device immediately asks if we should do homing or not. And then uh, we have this switch as you can see here. So this will be our uh, limit switch for the homing and then if I would press the red button and it's very intuitive, so it's a red background there, uh, it would skip this uh, action and we would, we would just uh, straight go to the main display. Or if I press this, then the step promoter would start uh, running, hopefully, and then it would run until I 
press the switch. So this will be a bit out of focus, but I show you that now I press this uh, button and you will hear some noise. So now the motor moves backwards. So now I press this. You see another noise or hear another noise because now it's parking. So it is waiting for me to release this button. So now uh, this was basically the parking. So it released the switch and it stopped. And that is now our origin, so the zero position. And now uh, I will try to find some pointy object. This will be perfect. So we have different items here and we can start right here. So whenever uh, you see a red rectangle, that means that we are standing over this menu item, but we haven't selected it. So this is the aperture or F number. This you have to read it from your objective lens from the barrel and uh, enter it. I can show you that I can enter this by clicking the rotor encoder. And then if I turn this thing, then I change the aperture. And when I press the encoder button again, then this becomes red and we exit so we can navigate through these items and some of the uh, values will be recalculated. So now the step size changed. And it, this is because uh, the step size, which is just in, in the default case, half of the depth of field, uh, that depends on the, on the aperture number and also on the magnification. So then whenever I change these two parameters, the depth of field will be updated and a recommended step size will be written here, which is just the depth of field divided by two. So then if I move to the other item, uh, that's the magnification. You have to somehow determine it. Either you read it from your lens, uh, it's on the barrel if you are using a macro lens, or you have to calculate it by yeah, kind of calibrating your field of view and uh, against uh, your frame, uh, I mean the CCD frame or CMOS frame, so the sensor basically, sensor size, and then you get a magnification value and you have to enter that. And then there is a formula uh, which you can use to calculate the depth of field. So that will be the sharp area or sharp width or band across your image. Uh, therefore, if you change these parameters, we can calculate the de depth of field and then we can determine the step size. But if we are not satisfied with the step size, we can enter this and we can change it. And uh, I can show you a funny thing that here, if I turn the rotor encoder slowly, then you can see that the value just changes with 1000 of a millimeter. But if I do it quickly, then it changes more rapidly. So I just uh, came up with an algorithm, a very simple algorithm, which uh, manages some kind of timekeeping. And if uh, we rotate the encoder above a certain speed, then uh, the incremental factor will be different. And I made this because in some projects I have this problem that I want to enter, let's say 1000 with a rotor encoder, which has 16 or in better case, 24 clicks per turn. So it takes uh, ages to, to reach 1000. But if I make it uh, speed sensitive, then it doesn't take ages, just a few moments. So then we have this uh, finish point, and that is basically where the stacking will be finished. And it is in millimeters, but it doesn't matter for us in a sense that we just have to look at the camera screen anyway and see uh, where the finish point of our focusing should be at. So then we enter this and I can move with the buttons. You will hear it probably. So moving forwards or backwards, or I can do this and uh, just observe the number here. Now, based on the parameters for the step promoter and whatnot, uh, I'm basically just moving 6.25 micrometers, which is out of the precision of this thing, but uh, whatever, it's just for demonstration. 
So whenever I do one single click, then the motor moves uh, by one uh, step. And that is now equivalent to 6.25 micrometer linear displacement. And also if I move it quickly, then obviously it jumps faster. And then I store this. And then I move to the next. So that will be the starting point of uh, where, where the stacking will start. So we enter again and I press the buttons. So I just move somewhere and I exit. So this becomes red. And now uh, the distance between these two points, the start point and the finish point is calculated here. That's the travel distance in millimeters. And if you look back here, we have half a millimeter step size here and we have roughly a three millimeters travel distance. So this gives us five. Uh, so that is our number of steps. So then I can go here and uh, this will be the starting. And uh, then uh, whenever we do a step, the progress will increase here by one. So this will just show us uh, not the percentage. So this uh, signal or this symbol have to be uh, changed. Uh, so this becomes instead of percentage, it's just number of frames taken. And at the end, these two numbers, uh, this here and the number which will be here, they should be the same. So then if I press this, uh, you will hear that the motor moves and then we see the screen updating. So I'm moving this, nothing will happen. So now I have to press the green button just to start the things. One step, one more step, one more step, one more step, and one more step. And it's finished. So now we are done. And uh, of course, this uh, should be also demonstrated by making macro pictures. So I will take a few objects uh, and then I will take a few macro shots. And then here, uh, just the last option, if you want to do homing any time, and once again, you can put this limit switch anywhere you want. You just enter the homing and you start. So now it moves. So I press this. It's parking and I release. And now we are at the new home position. So then you can go back to uh, whichever item you want. And uh, based on this, uh, new values, new set of values, you can uh, start uh, doing the uh, focusing again. And now uh, I keep this camera on. I mean, I will still use this camera, but I move it on the rig, just so you see why we need to do stacking. So now you are looking at a piece of a microcontroller, an Arduino Nano, and it's chip. And uh, you can see the problem. I will try to point on the image again uh, with a small pointer. So this area is sharp, right? But towards the top, you can see that it's out of focus. Let's say pin D10, D11, D12, they are not sharp. And also towards the text here, like nano and the button there, or this uh, A6 letter and uh, number here, and A5, uh, they are out of focus. And uh, that's a problem, of course. And then uh, we want to uh, fix this somehow. And I show you that if I move the motor in a certain way, uh, now it doesn't matter which way I move, then I can have different areas of the picture in focus. So let's just move in one direction. And you can see that the top became more and more sharp. So now you can actually read the 11 and the 12 very nicely. And then we have this blurred area here. So I move the other direction now, because just remember, for example, that this we cannot read this letter, which is like almost at the same level as nano. So now it's gradually becoming sharper and sharper. And 
now I can read it, it's very sharp. It says A5. And then now the top is like totally out of focus. So actually this would be the uh, purpose of a stacking. That just imagine that uh, now I moved from the top uh, area being focused down to the bottom area uh, being focused. And if I could have taken snapshots from all the sharp uh, sections or slices, uh, that would have been nice because then I could uh, merge them together in some way and get an overall sharp image, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that with my uh, gadget. And then I will put uh, the picture on the video somewhere, for example here, uh, so you will see the final result. And also, uh, just as a demonstration, I take a picture from, let's say, this state, or maybe I just move to the center as a reference to see a before and an after picture. And then that will tell you why we need to do focus stacking. So now I just make the center roughly, the center sharp. somewhere here. And now I will take a reference picture and I will do the stacking. So I will get back to you after the stacking. So as I already showed you before, uh, this was the reference image which is taken uh, at the center of the area of interest, let's say. So we can see that the, roughly the center of the chip and then diagonally uh, the pins between D6 and D8 and pins between A1 and uh, REF uh, are sharp, but then the bottom of the picture and the top of the picture are not sharp. And then I did the stacking and then uh, it took quite a lot of time to merge everything together because I think I took too many images. But then uh, after merging, blending everything and uh, cropping the image a little bit just to keep the good part, I got this image. And you can see that this is perfectly sharp. I do a few back and forth motions just to give you more feeling. So before, after, before, after. And you can see that it's uh, sharp everywhere. Uh, I can see a few artifacts uh, up here. We have a little bit of uh, blurry part. But probably I can uh, fix this in Photoshop. And also the button here is a bit blurry, but maybe that would have been blurry anyway because it's too much uh, outwards from the plane of the PCB here. So that might be an issue, but otherwise it's uh, sharp as heck. And even if I magnify this image, you can see that it's very sharp. Uh, another artifact is here probably, but uh, otherwise you can even see inside uh, the pin uh, connections and you can see it see through it and everything is very sharp. So I think uh, it's quite an impressive uh, focus stacking. And this is basically my first try uh, that uh, I really made a nice uh, stacked image. So it's not, not very bad from, from a first image. But uh, yeah, you can see that we can have significant uh, improvement in image quality if we use uh, focus uh, stacking. So basically this was the purpose of this video, to show you my new system and introduce you the capabilities of this system. So if you want to know more about uh, this stuff, please uh, head over to my website, link is in the description, uh, you will see everything there. I shared a few extra pictures, a few extra information about how the software works and so on and uh, you will see how it works. Also, please visit pcbway.com and visit my project page because you can see the PCB and buy it from them. So you can make your own uh, electronics for controlling uh, your own uh, focus stacking circuit. And also, if you want to support me, please consider either becoming my Patreon so you can have uh, exclusive access to, for example, source codes of my uh, software and so on, or give me a donation so I can make projects like this. So I hope that you like this video. I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.